We've heard a lot in the media about LASIK eye surgery and other procedures for vision correction, but will they work for everyone? My first guest today is Dr. Lawrence Chow, an ophthalmologist who founded the Chow Vision Institute right here in Orange County. Thanks for coming, Lawrence. Thank you for having me on the show. You know, this is a very interesting topic to me. I had LASIK surgery 10 years ago, and it is a life-altering procedure. I mean, it changes your whole life. Can you tell people you know, uh, what LASIK is and what, what's involved with it? Absolutely. LASIK is a type of vision correction surgery where we're using a laser called an eczema laser to reshape the cornea or the front portion of the eye, which we know as the window of the eye. In shaping this, we produce great vision and patients are usually really happy, as you are, with yeah. the results we're getting. So how do you exactly shape it? Do you do it with a, a laser blade of some sort? Is there any knives involved? How do you right. do this? Right. What we're actually doing is we're creating a very thin flap in the cornea itself. And underneath that flap, what we're doing is we're delivering a very specific pattern of laser. Mm -hmm. The latest technology uses something called wavefront technology mm -hmm. to really pick out the very precise errors in each person's eye that's specific to their own eye. By correcting these specific errors, we get outstanding uncorrected visual acuity. So the cornea is the outer layer, and so what happens as we get older? Does the cornea change or does the lens change? What's, what's going on that's making our vision change? Right. Well, the first change that tends to happen is in our early to mid-40s, mm -hmm. where we experience all of a sudden our arms are too short. This is called presbyopia, and the lens no longer is as flexible as it used to be. So what tends to happen is we go into reading glasses or bifocals. Well, so what happens to all of us is because we are not able to read, LASIK can correct this, but LASIK is limited in that what we usually do for patients 40 and beyond is we correct one eye for distance and we correct the other eye to read. Okay, so even though the problem is with the lens, which is, behind, and you're gonna show us, I believe, behind the cornea, you're actually, changing the cornea, not the lens, with this procedure? Correct. In yeah. LASIK, we work strictly on the cornea itself. Okay. So, so what do you mean by a flap? What, is a, what, what does that mean? A flap is a thin section of the cornea under which we actually perform the laser. The flap is made right here in the cornea with either a laser or an instrument called a microkeratome. Mm -hmm. And it's a very precise section of tissue under which we work and we actually deliver the laser underneath and put the flap back into its normal position. So you're going to make a little circular cut on that, on that, uh, on the cornea? Yes, we do. The flap is actually made in the cornea itself and it's reflected back. The laser is then delivered to the cornea and then the flap is actually returned to its anatomic position. So to the underside of the cornea? Correct. So the cornea is still, so you're slicing the cornea in half? Almost? Well, you're slicing it in a section such as this, mm -hmm. not like in the old days when we used to do RK or radiokeratotomy, where the incisions would go in like pizza pie cuts. Mm -hmm. We're actually working in a different plane such as this. Okay, so you open it up and then on the underside of that flap, that's where you t hit the laser. Correct. The it, laser is guided by a computer and a very specific pattern mm -hmm. of shots is placed on the cornea and the shots are guided usually by what we call a guidance system or a tracking system, mm -hmm. which will follow the eye as it moves through surgery. When I had it done, it was quite quick. I imagine it's even quicker now, or? Right, it's a very quick procedure. Mm -hmm. I think that the workup and the follow-up take much longer, right. but the procedure itself is a matter of several minutes. Now, who benefits from this, or rather, who who is not a candidate for this, or what, right. what are the best type of people? Well, there are certain limitations. Overall, LASIK is a fantastic procedure, but for example, we want patients with healthy eyes, mm -hmm. who have stable prescriptions, and who have undergone a whole battery of tests, making sure that their candidacy is correct for this procedure. Mm -hmm. Ideally, for example, patients with, for example, Coke bottle glasses or very, very high prescriptions may not be the ideal candidates mm -hmm. for LASIK because there may not be enough thickness in this cornea. Instead now, we have things like implantable contact lenses. Yeah. This is a Vizian ICL, and obviously this is a very giant model yeah. of this lens, which can be implanted into the eye to provide great vision 
without doing any type of laser vision correction. Wow, and they can see far and near with that or no? Well, before 40 you can, mm -hmm. but after presbyopia takes hold, which is usually in the mid 40s, patients will need to wear reading glasses unless they're using one eye for distance and one eye for reading. And this can be taken out later on if you need to change it? Yes, it can. This is a removable lens. So it's a contact lens that goes inside, so it's less irritating and it's permanent type. Correct. For those patients whose corneas do not qualify for surgery, the ICL is an ideal new technology for them. That ICL is that intra. Right, this is the Vizian ICL, which is an implantable contact lens. So what does the ICL mean? Uh, the ICL stands for Intraocular Contact Lens. Oh, I see. Okay. ICL. Okay, great. So you, and one thing you mentioned, a stable prescription. What do you mean by that? They have to have a right. stable prescription. Well, a lot of times we have very young patients coming in, and in the process of maturity, their prescription goes from, let's say, from a minus three being nearsighted to the next year minus four to the next year minus five. We usually try to tell patients that we want to see a very stable prescription before we treat them. Mm -hmm. And this usually qualifies patients over the age of 18. Because younger than that, your eyes are getting worse and worse and you exactly okay. then what is um, what is the downside of LASIKs I guess I think that the key thing for LASIK is that it's done correctly eye doctors have the responsibility to spend the appropriate amount of time mm -hmm. examining and discussing all the options with their patients yeah. it's really not a procedure which should be done in a in a type of assembly line mentality, mm -hmm. we really need to slow down and we need to get this perfect the first time. Yeah. Like I had mine done, I had halos around everything. It was really bad at first, and now they've got, they're almost totally gone. But is that still a big problem with this procedure? Well, the problem has really diminished ever since we've been using wavefront technologies. Mm -hmm. The wavefront really treats the specific errors in the eye instead of just setting a template for everybody yeah. so that we can actually diminish and reduce those halos and glare after surgery. And then what are the other things, like dry eyes or what other problems could you expect? Or? Right. Well, overall, we want to make sure that one's health is good. Yeah. And there are many conditions which can disqualify someone from having LASIK, mm -hmm. such as having too big of a prescription, such as someone having cataracts, someone having glaucoma. Mm -hmm. But overall, we want to spend time making sure that this is the correct vision correction procedure, since now we have so many different options to correct vision. You mentioned cataracts. Why don't we talk about cataracts for a minute? What sure. exactly is a cataract? Right. The cataract is something that all of us will eventually get. We equate them to gray hair and wrinkles. A cataract is when the lens of the eye, which is usually very clear like this, starts to turn gray and cloudy. And this usually happens starting in about the 60s, and it's a slow, gradual mm -hmm. process. When the lens becomes cloudy, light really can't get into the eye correctly and we actually have to replace the lens in doing something called cataract surgery. And what we do is we implant an artificial lens in the eye at the time of cataract surgery to focus the light onto the retina here. So you can take that lens out and then you put an art, one of these types of lens in. Yes, absolutely. Lens implantation has been a standard part of cataract surgery for many decades now. And the standard intraocular lens, this is a giant model, yeah. not to scale, of course, um, actually sits in an anatomic position where mm -hmm. your lens was, and this stays there forever. This is meant to be permanent, and not one size fits all. This is measured very specifically to fit your eye to give you the most optimal vision. And then this lens here looks different than that. Why is that? Right. Over the past several years, we've had an explosion of technology in offering us new lens technologies. This whole thing in talking about presbyopia or the inability to see up close after 40 mm -hmm. has to be addressed with these new lenses. So we call these new lenses presbyopia correcting lenses. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they not only offer distance vision like our standard lenses do, but they also offer near vision. This wow. lens is a local lens which was developed right here in Orange County called the Crystal Lens. And the Crystal Lens actually has the ability to bend and flex in the eye. And by doing so, we can get patients quite good distance as well as near and intermediate vision. Oh, that's amazing. Well, we're just about out of time. So you're telling me after my Lasix is 
no good and I, and I need cataracts, I can still look forward to doing something like that and having great vision still. Absolutely, we have a whole host of new technologies. The other technology we have to correct presbyopia is called the multifocal lens. Mm -hmm. And you can see here, there are rings on this lens. In doing so, these rings also provide a very full range of vision. Wow. We can't always promise that patients will never wear glasses, but boy, can we ever get patients happy with this and decrease their dependence on glasses and spectacles. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, thank you very much for coming. This is really fascinating, and I don't think a lot of people realize that these lenses are good now for distance and close-up, and I can tell you, it's a, as you know, you see the patients, but it's a life-altering procedure. Having LASIK and playing sports, it's just, it's just an amazing thing. It, I, it really is. I feel very privileged to yeah. be in this profession. It's, it's very, very fantastic. Thanks so much for coming. We appreciate it very much. It was very informative. Thank you for having me on the show.